So Ian and I are going to talk about the Open Aquila Roadmap, but before I move on to that, I was remiss in my earlier presentation and left out a couple of slides that I just wanted to touch on now. Um, I showed you what we've done so far um, for 2020.2, but I forgot to tell you what we're currently working on and what will be also be included when we release. So we're currently working on the selection session screen um, and that will be included as part of 2020.2. Um, also on the um, sharing search URLs, um, we're working on that. And finally, accessing advanced and remote searches. So the advanced and remote search pages won't have the new UI applied. They will have the, um, the improvements, but um, they will actually open the legacy page for 2020.2. And this is just a very early sneak peek at the selection session. We haven't got the, the um, selection buttons on here as yet, but it will be that the new UI, search UI will be nested in here and you'll still have the LMS panel to the right-hand side. And we'll have some clever way of accessing advanced searches and remote repositories from here as well. So moving on to the roadmap. So I just, in this session, I just want to uh, review the last couple of releases, talk about hot fixes and um, just uh, review what's in 2020.2. And then we'll have a look at what we're intending to look at for 2021.1. Um, so just reviewing 2019.2, and I do like to go back and review the last couple of releases just to remind you of some of the great features that uh, are included um, and that you may actually be missing out on by um, having earlier versions implemented at the moment. So 2019.2 included the um, duplicate checking for attachments, taxonomy sorting, um, displaying deleted usernames, um, and it was our, our first run at the Aquila Beautification Program, um, project rather. Um, so the duplicate checking, uh, so we already had it on edit boxes, but we extended it to attachments. Um, so it now includes uh, files using MD5 hashes, URLs and edit boxes. And just a quick look. So now um, edit boxes, you get a duplicate warning straight away. If you, um, if you type in something that exists in another um, item within the same collection um, and the same with uploading file attachments, it will tell you straight away, you have a link to click to have a look at the details and that will bring up the details for each uh, area. So it tells us in the description, the description's the same in these, um, the title and also in the attachments. Taxonomy sorting. So we implemented the ability to alphabetically sort taxonomies across a whole taxonomy or at a specific child level. And we made some improvements to the rest endpoint as well. As you can see here, we've got these new options. Um, and the display of deleted usernames. So persistent storage of item ownership. Um, so we now show in the owner field on the moderation history page and on the owners and collaborators page uh, if a user has been deleted. And there's just an example there of an owner that has been removed. And also on the moderation history and owner and collaborators page, we can see now that we have a history of deleted users. So we spoke about Open Aquila 2020.1 in our session this morning. Uh, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, <laughs> getting mixed up with 2020.2. Uh, Ian, I'm going to hand over to you to just run us over the 2020.1 release. Yes, no problem. So 2020.1 uh, sort of was a two-pronged approach. We had um, a good number of sort of updates in there for providing a somewhat generic L2I approach, uh, which Unicon undertook to just uh, increase the support for LMS is going forward, especially with all the things that are happening with Blackboard and they're changing to their sort of software as a service platform. And at the same time, we also looked at a big sort of enhancement to the accessibility compliance, so for WCAG 2.0. 
Uh, so we went through the system after a whole lot of it was reviewed and did a quite a number of updates to try and meet those guidelines. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there were a number of, this is where we started really bringing in dependency upgrades and that kind of thing. And obviously there was a few bug fixes. So that was uh, 20.1 at the start of the year. Excellent. And hot fixes. Uh, yes, and hot fixes. There's been a lot. I'll, I'll state that one. Yes. Uh, so by the end of this week, uh, there will be 25 in total just for this year. And they've covered every version going all the way back to 6.6 .6 and up to 20.1. Uh, a couple were released just yesterday uh, for uh, some security issues, which I'll touch on below. And um, basically since 2019.1, we started to use the GitHub releases feature to track um, hotfixes. It's also when we started to change our versioning number to be um, more along the idea of sort of a minor and patch version at the end so that it could be more readily tracked rather than just number of revisions. So we publish every hotfix and release um, on 2019 plus on GitHub releases. And indeed the Open Aquila server of versions 2019 onwards actually queries that GitHub releases page when you're in your uh, system health check page checking the version. So that's how it tells whether you're up to date or not anymore. Um, but if you ever do want to track things, you can have a look in there and you can even um, register on GitHub for release uh, notifications and then you'll get an email if you've got a GitHub account. Uh, why, why do we do hotfixes and all these hotfixes? Well, one of the key drivers is security. And so that can come in two, two main ways, um, a changing of the landscape. So one big um, thing that changed this year was the introduction of a, um, a minimum same site policy check on requests within uh, basically browser communication. So this was first put forward um, by Google with their Chrome browser but it was quickly uh, taken up by all other browsers. And in the context of Open Aquila, it's very important because it influenced the communication between say your um, Open Aquila and our LMS selection session. So if that was not working uh, and you didn't meet those minimum security requirements, then things would break. So we, we put a hotfix out for that to properly uh, declare our same site intentions, if you like. And so that was one big driver for a hotfix. As well as that, uh, from time to time, we will find vulnerabilities. Again, as things change, whether it's just the dependency, as I mentioned earlier, or indeed just some issue with the code. Uh, so we just yesterday released a um, hotfix or set of hotfixes uh, covering all the above versions for one vulnerability where there was access to uh, the file system from where you were running Open Aquila. And so that is one hotfix that is a, a key one to use. And indeed, when we start to address those vulnerabilities now, um, behind the scenes, there's an Open Aquila security group. And that security group will publish security advisories on GitHub, noting those issues and which patches you need to apply to address them. Uh, the other reason we do hotfixes is if bugs are raised by clients and we've identified that they have uh, limited potential for side effects we hotfixes can't be tested as exhaustively as major releases. So we need to be sure that any changes we make in those hotfixes are sort of focused and, and minimal. But if there's key bugs that are raised or security issues, then we, we won't stop. We'll just get those hotfixes out. We'll test them and uh, then they're there and they're available. But that's typically why uh, we would release those hotfixes. Back to you, Kath. Thanks, Ian. Okay, so um, yes, 2020.2, we spoke about this morning. Um, so we have the new search UI, including faceted searching and selection sessions. I have just added a note in there that we won't be including the gallery and video views in 2020.2. Um, we uh, basically um, can't fit everything in before the end of the year. Um, as we've often said over the, uh, over the like even last year, the new UI um, is a very big job and um, that we're looking at a system which is about 17 years old now. Um, so trying to work our way through uh, the code that's in there and applying a new technology um, is a big and time consuming job um, and we want to do it properly 
and do it once. So, um, yep, so it is an iterative process. Um, it's actually quite fascinating um, for myself sitting in on our planning sessions um, for um, our sprints um, with the development team as someone who's not as um, technically minded as the developers and listening to their work breakdowns for each little part of the, the new UI that is being applied and um, realising how many, how many components there are to actually um, applying this new technology. It's, it's quite eye-opening. Um, yes, yeah, so further refinement of the default theme, uh, increased theming capability, dependency upgrades and bug fixes as we spoke this morning. And um, so moving on to uh, what we're looking at for 2021. So we want to continue applying the new UI. Um, so the, the next thing we'll look at is the gallery and video views um, so that we have that uh, functionality on the search page. Um, and then we thought the next logical step would be to look at the summary page um, because it's probably the next most used thing aside from the search. Um, and then we thought that we'd look at the advanced search page. Um, the advanced search is quite um, a complex page and it has components of, of wizards and, and, um, and such on it. And we thought that would be a good introduction before we sink our teeth into the contribution wizard page. Um, and from there, we'll probably look at manage resources, um, workflow pages, notifications and anything else. Um, but we'll work our way through it and, and see how we go. And um, so doing some parts of it um, helps with the next part of it. And there can be components that can be reused, etc. cetera. Um, in terms of the last RDA round that we've just finished, uh, there were four um, fi final feature requests that we had in there. Um, and we did make it clear that we would um, only do things that would sort of fit in with the new UI, which, uh, as we know, is ongoing. Um, and so download search results to CSV functionality will be included in the next release after 2020.2. Um, it's something that is clearly uh, useful and wanted across the board. Um, the, Ability to bulk download attachments from the summary page was also very popular, and it is something that we'll put on the roadmap when we hit the summary page. And um, it, it will only be done in the new UI, um, and certainly we'll be looking at that as part of the summary page uh, project. Um, the the second, the last two, the upgrade tiny MCE and the Kaltura one, and um, it will be based on on time. If we have time, um, we'll, we'll also look at those. So it's time dependent. And I just want to finish up by showing you a list of all the implemented features that have come out of the RDA. Uh, for those of you not familiar, the RDA stands for um, Repository Development Alliance. Um, and it is a, um, a project that we run um, here in Edelex with our clients, um, it's an optional um, buy-in, which um, enables members to be able to vote um, to, to basically to fund um, development of specific features that they actually uh, request and vote on. And so from the beginning of the RDA, you can see that we have included lots and lots of fantastic features which have benefited the community as a whole. And um, so I think I'll leave it at that. Were there any questions at all about the roadmap? So I might just start with one. So there, there was a question from Karen and Kate about um, duplicates, um, but but Samantha, one of our, our developers, has has jumped into the chat and and um, and answered that already. Um, Karen's just asked a question about when is twenty one point one expected? Um, well, we can't really say at this time, Karen. You asked the hard questions. Gosh, <laughs> um, we like we're still we're scoping that at the moment um, as we're trying to finish 2020.2. So probably early next year, we could give you a better indication of when we think that might happen. Terrific. Uh, 
David Porter's just asked, can you just speak to the usage count and what that is? Is that recording of item views? We've had a few questions from our academics about gathering usage data. Yeah, so David, that was something that was implemented in 2018.2, I think, or 2019.1, I can't remember, but um, it actually, it's, it's both on the item itself, so item views, and also on attachment to um, and there's an option that can be set for um, unique uh, unique views versus um, well I can't remember the right terminology but um, so we'll, we'll only count once in a session versus every time an item or an attachment is hit um, I hope that answers the question okay Sam Parker's just commented, it is handled as an ACL possibly, just need to turn on. Yep, so nods from, from Kath and Carl. Yeah, yes it is, sorry, it is an ACL. It's a, there's a view count ACL that needs to be switched on for users to be able to see the count. Terrific. And yeah, David, yeah, absolutely. We can chat offline about how we might be able to extract that data from your instance. Um, and yeah, we've, we've got some extra breakout sessions um, shortly, um, particularly one with, with the consulting team with, with Carl and Nelson. Um, so they might be able to talk you through that.